changing area. So this would be a scenario where it's kind of funny to draw it like this, but you could have changing cross-sectional areas along with changing delta x. And so in this case, you'd get for a pressure drop So we might call this K A I plus a half. And so then our transmissibility at the half grid bell. where this includes all the heterogeneities for K, delta X, and A. So this is the most general form, and when you code it up, you may want to just code it up like that, right? Because it'll work. This will reduce in, in, in the case that you have constant areas or, um, right? So if you, if you have, you can just see if, you, if, the, if the areas are the same, you have the areas are the same here, you can factor out an area and they cancel, right? Same with the permeabilities same with delta x. So this is the most general form that would include any heterogeneity you have. But if you have constant delta x, constant a, constant k, then it also works. So let's say if the fluid flow through a small area uh, block through it, and, and a, a level block that has a big area. So if which, which is the, what is the area that we're, that we're putting into Well, I mean, it, what do you mean? So this is I and I plus one. So if, if, it, if it flows from, if this is I and this is I plus one, then you would just use, I mean, this is, uh, this is delta X, right? This is delta X I plus one. And really the area is into the board. Right? This would be delta X. Because it's 
Yeah, in one dimension we don't. I mean, this that's the model, right? You, you can't do anything about that. I know what you're saying. It's, it's going to flow into a small small area, right? But but then it has the opportunity to diffuse into the rest of the core, right? So it'll, it, the inlet would be small, but then it, once it's once it begins to enter, then it would diffuse. Of course, the diff diffusion would be two dimensional, right? But but nevertheless, that's the model. Here. So in, I mean, in a one dimensional reservoir, for this to be accurate. I think you'd, you'd have to have pretty small changes in area. Okay. So I mean, the way we wrote this transmissibility holds, but you but you notice that I also have this term I plus a half on essentially things that are associated with the fluid, right? So the viscosity and the formation volume factor, the density. Okay. So you could also do some type of averaging on the fluid properties. I mean, you could certainly have, you know heterogeneity in the fluid properties. You could have heavy oil in one part of the reservoir and a lighter oil in another part of the reservoir. Um, in this class, or at least for now, I mean, and I think there is a there's a slide in the in the note slides that talks about how you might do that because you know your, your fluid properties are typically going to be associated with the pressure in some way. Like your density certainly is associated. I mean, the density of the fluid is going to be dependent upon the pressure. And so usually you have some functional dependence on pressure, so you can interpolate the pressure across the grid blocks to determine, to evaluate what your fluid properties are, at the cent you know, according to that. Um, you know, what's more, I mean, what's more common, or what we'll, we're, we're going to put off the discussion for now until we talk about multi-phase flow, because when you have multi-phase flow, um, you know, well, you have your, you have your viscosity for each fluid, um, if they're immiscible, they wouldn't change. But if they were miscible flow, then your viscosity would be a function of the concentration of the of the phase. Right? So, um, so there, there's a lot more complicated things you can do in terms of fluid properties. For now, uh, we're we're just going to say that the fluid properties are constant in the reservoir. For now, we'll sort of put off the discussion.